Esports. Uh, but we're going to swing on over now to Alpha, which is Team War versus Fuego Gaming. It's Miles and Momo. And Miles, no more hitting Momo. No, Mum. Into the first map we go. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> kind of sweet now. Uh, War versus Fuego. A little bit, obviously, talking about this. These guys, all European. Some ex-teammates going up against ex-teammates. This is, I don't want to call it a rivalry, but this is a very special game in, its, in itself, because obviously, one win here, whoever comes through, goes through. Gets yep. that top two spot, for sure. Um, I don't know the exact number, but Vortex for War and Hawkey for Fuego, they teamed together, whether it was on an Epsilon or whatever it may be, for like 15, 16, could be 20, I'm making numbers up, but so long, like a year and a half with each other. Then you got Mad Cat on one side, Josh on the other side. That was, again, kind of a three, four, five year stint of where these guys were teaming with each other and against each other now. War, though, coming out hot. 50 seconds from the first half point, and they've got the rotation. Fuego, wake up. This is absolutely disgusting start to this matchup again. An important match. Phil stressed the, the severity of the situation for both of them. They're playing for basic qualification into that bracket play. So far, absolutely flawless gameplay from War. They have cleaned up every point so far. Fuego have yet to find themselves on the board here. Not what we've seen from them so far in the tournament. They've been great, but here we have it. Frag PT doing great work up front. That front line is solid as a rock for Team War right now. You can see the four man push towards the back end of the map for Fuego. They spawn sort of pipe side and they're setting up for the next one. Right, right, we need something. We need something on the board. They, they need something most definitely. It's about to be 100 and oh, they have most definitely got those last 10 seconds in them, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to break through the window or control the platform. However, three and four, Connor Harry you spawn at the back, and this is due to obviously the rotation from Vortex and Josh down low. They're going to be hitting jungle very soon. It's it's going to be an important 2v1 versus Chaxter, and Chaxter's going to go down, and you're going from bad to the worst. You're about to lose the spawns. Huge kill from Mad Cat there, coming in with the ICR. What? Bad timing for Hawkey there as the Lightning Strike is gifted, hand-wrapped with a bow for Petey. Lightning Strike, Hellstorm has been acquired. He's on a seven-kill streak. We were shouting his name. Adam Pete from the Raptors here. This guy is going off. Nine, Ooh. ten kill streak for Petey. Fuego. Oh. This is tough. This is tough, but the spawns at the back are going to be very, very close. They're going to get on the point immediately. The shots are there. For BD, can't get any more, but a teammate is there to get him. And Dave looks a good kill. Shots to get it done as well as he finds himself a nice two in the back. And now we're going to hit straight towards pipes. And again, we do have Fuego there. But honestly, what's the point at 117 to 7? Fuego, just go into the search. Let's see how we go. Comebacks are on, but this is, this is bloody ridiculous at this point. PT continues this absolute tear through the Fuego lineup at 12 and 13. Can he keep up the pace? The frag is now also backing him up there at 11 and 4. And that gruesome twosome is literally tearing Fuego asunder. Yeah, no one might be on the hard point right now, but team will have control. They've actually got a Hellstorm as well. And we're, we're talking, we're going into the fourth hard point here. There is specialist available. Petey's got the crash, the attack 5 boost ready to rare. And we're going to see a uh, Hellstorm curved on in. Mad Cat's going to feel the wrath of that one. Petey Ooh. finds his 15th and just like that, 15 and 4, TAC 5 boost popped. Is he only going to hit three of the five players? That was unfortunate timing. Josh and Defrag do go down. <laughs> what? What's but 100 that? points and counting here. Fuego, they're in uh, deep water. I mean, it's a terrible, terrible situation to be for Fuego. I mean, nothing is going their way whatsoever. You've got Vortex hitting shot punches from across the, you know, the pipes. It's absolutely ludicrous skill so far from everyone on war. They've really come to play. However, Shots are going the way of Fuego, a couple of kills go there to way. You've got five seconds before the hard point flips and there's a possibility we could be seeing them over here now. Harry does find the best of defrag there and Josh. I mean, it goes down to Harry as well. Good stuff from Harry as he tries to get his team back into this. It's a two kill spree for him, two kills for Chaxter. But again, what a ludicrous mountain. Bit of an Everest of the scoreline for Fuego to get back onto this one. And it's plays like this that are going to really help. Little kills back and forth, solid fundamentals. The trade's really working out for Fuego there on the first hard point. 40 points away from streaks is Harry. A couple more. He can possibly use those to turn the ties. But Josh has got himself a... <laughs> oh, good night, mate. Okay, interesting choice and timing there on the slam. I think you not hesitate a bit, but his slide was uh, a little slow, maybe crashed into the wall there. But the Type 5 boost comes in. Harry's got himself streaks. Josh has wasted that grab slam. He's obviously halfway there. But never say never right now. Fuego, cutting that 100-point lead down, chipping away at it. 
10 seconds will go to them. And guess what? They're now trying to flip those spawns. We see number 60, Frag actually spawning out. Connor and Chaxter combining with the double each. That's going to be four down here. The perfect rotation coming in for Fuego and maybe the start of something special. Yeah, that was a really nice opening kills there from the back end. The Hellstorm just forced them all inside. Now it comes down to Mad Cat to try and do something there, but Dave somehow absolutely rips him up top. Chaxter gets a nice two there with a slam, keeps the back line safe. And the clock will continue to take in Fuego's favor. Uh, and again, the grab slam there, you very rarely see a slam used in that position. That may have only just got one, but it gets two. Not only that, but it spawns two out and spawns two in. Those players being your teammates, that is a, such an influential grab slam. If you watch it back, you'll see, however, PD with the double. And now, Miles, the 100-point lead has been chipped away to just 50. This is a real thing. We've got two lightning strikes for Fuego. Where the hell's war? Or have really gone quiet. This is very strange indeed, Philip. Connor gets on point, finds a couple. Now we've got Mad Cat backing him up. Sadly, he finds a few in his teammates, but hey, that's all right. He keeps on winning these gunfights, and Warp may be able to get a little bit more time out of this, but the rotation's gone down. It all falls to Petey. Great spot for Petey to be in, but he does have to contend now with multiple attacking players from the back there, and Hawkey's going to get it done. Harry on point. These final kills go the way of the players of war, and it gives them one avenue of, of attack now to try to hit this hard point. Beautiful. War Machine's up and about. Hawkey's got it. Yeah, beautiful stuff from Chaxter as well. Hawkey coming in with that War Machine. So, so important. 40 seconds left, and these guys are spawning down low. Miles, I can feel a team change coming, and I will say, Fuego, to not get flustered, to not panic, to not throw it all away like they have done, has been absolutely nothing short of a miracle here. Everything seems to be going their way. Dave's invested the Tempest, maybe... Right Ooh. time, wrong time, we'll soon find out. Two connect, three do go down, and 20 seconds left. War are not wanting to give this lead up just yet. Dave, I will say, very nice shots with the Tempest. Close to the lightning strike, and of course going down low. Really Good night, Mad Cat. We'll see you down low. Rotations will be setting in, and Dave still fighting for that Hellstorm. He's on a three kill streak. But War, for the first time in what seems forever, have got something going again. Honestly, Fuego's comeback there was really brilliant. Dave's Hillstorm now in the top position to find some more out of this. That's his fourth in a row. Will be taken care of there, but lovely stuff. He gets himself his 15th kill of the match with that. Now Vortex up top, his war machine ready to go. Way almost managing to find Connor downstairs. And again, we're seeing that aggression now. The play is starting to develop. Josh has just managed to nab himself his nice second kill there. Slam's still ready to go. Dave has a Hellstorm still to work with. Plenty of ordnance ready to go here onto the hard points. 30 seconds remain, and it is very closely contested. And again, Fuego not willing to give up much anymore. They've managed to battle back into this one. A true Herculean effort to get back into that scoreline, and now that they're close, they're not letting anything slip. Yeah, Josh has got his slam back, so we might want to invest that on the next hard point. PT 22 and 15 alongside some really, really strong performances, Dave being one of them. But I will say for me, Chaxter has been that kind of standout player who's come up clutch when it matters. However, down by 35 right now, we go into our third and final rotation shortly. Who's going to be able to control it? We saw Josh fail that slam previously. Is he going to bring it in? Is he going to need to? That's the question. There's that war machine. Classic positioning from Vortex here. Gets those shots through there on you. Can bank it off of the little catwalk there and really slow down the attackers. They don't have a whole lot more to work with. Josh has got the slam, but can't see how many players are coming around that corner. He's got overextend. The pinch is going to be nullified. It's now a one-pronged attack. They can focus their efforts onto one line of sight, and they know that's going to be the other side of the map where the next hard point will be, to the right-hand side. Vortex has been on the struggle bus since the start of the game. He was like negative 10 for what seems to be the whole map. However, five kill streak now finds himself a full set of streaks. Dave with that Hellstorm. Favoring Team War here, 25 points left. However, rotation is so important. Look at number eight, nine, and 10. PD, Dave, Vortex, all holding down those spawns. Hawkey's gonna be shot punched by PT and Fuego. They were put down by about 100. They fought back into this, but right now, they could lose by 100 if Team War continue. Yeah, they've really got to make a play happen now. I and mean, again, the clock is ticking. The final 10 points now for War. They're going to go for the win. Petey's on point. They're going to start closing ranks, getting in real close. Josh has got the slam to work with. This is basically done, friends. There's no one anywhere for Fuego. The fire has been extinguished here in map one, and Team War get it done. That was insane. They start, that was like 9 to like 140 at a point. I didn't even think they were spawned in. And then eventually Harry caught life and we're able to bring the team back, pick up a couple set of streaks. Fortunately, with a slow start like that, it's going to be pretty impossible to come back on frequency. And also, to keep you guys updated, E United and Elevator tied 1-1, going to the control C side. Celtic are currently down 30 points. 
going in, but they're up 2-1 in the series. The crazy thing is, if Celtic win the series, they automatically get their spot. If they lose the series, LFA doesn't even beat E United to get their spot. Oh, wow. A lot on the line then. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> For a few teams. And again, it's been funny. Yeah, going off of, you know, yesterday you saw teams like 100 Thieves, e United, kind of standard, expected. They, they got their wins. They looked solid doing so. It was everything that you thought. And then, you know, United goes up against Elevate here. It's 1-1 one, one tied up. Obviously, still a lot more to be played in that series. But, I mean, we've seen it at Pro League, too. You know, you might expect United to come out, come out and maybe 3-0 Elevate. But Elevate is still a Pro League team, and they're still good players. And anything can happen. Oh, anything can happen. I think how many times have we said that this weekend already? It's just the <laughs> truth of champs. It's every, whatever stream you tune into, we all ended up saying anything can happen. And, and speaking really of, United and Elevate now on that Bravo stream, of course, as Study was updating us, uh, tied up 1-1 going into this control. Control's been a funny one as well. When I've seen United play, sometimes they can look like the best control team in the game, and then sometimes they can just look a little lost. But I think the one way of shutting them down is, of course, slowing them down, you know, taking them one one bit of a time. But it's getting those Sorgs out of position. Elevate right now, they're down by five. Prestini seems to be lighting up. He's got himself a double. And again, when Prestini, Sim, Abizi get in that spawn, it's very, very difficult to get them out. However, B's gone, looking for the A zone. But they do have a life lead of five. That's something we always talk about is execution in a team. You know, if you get in the right position, how well can you hold on to an advantage, how well can you, you know, press your advantage, and E-United are very, very good at that. If you get them in the right spot, they tend to make the most of their opportunities, and that's what you said about keep the Sorgs out of position, do everything you can to throw Sim and Ibiza off balance, don't let them get set up, don't let them get comfortable, because they will start to just run a mark across your team. The only thing that's going to get me scary for this Series 4 Elevate is the fact that they lost that map too. We saw them versus Celtic. They were able to win it in a 6-0 fashion. The fact that you were able to pull off a respawn, especially versus the United, mm. on that first map, you have to be feeling really confident going into that game too. You lost it in a 6-2 fashion. I just don't see how they're going to be able to bounce back winning two more respawns versus the United after they let that first map jitters or the first map warm up <laughs> go through. Yeah, you capitalized on the first one that was a difficult enough thing to do and then you didn't capitalize on maybe what would have been a little easier. I was going to say, Hunter Thieves wearing green, United black and gold. Like, I, I had to double check that this morning. <laughs> Looking a little different there. Black and gold, I, I can get behind it. But. We got black and gold, we got watermelons, we got a lot of New Jerseys right now. <laughs> <laughs> the 100 Thieves watermelons. <laughs> oh my god. I was like, who's that team over there? Slasher changed roster or something? I came through security at the same time as the whole team and I turned around and I was like, I don't recognize any of these M teams. And I look again, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> they're always hunting. <laughs> Wild. Interesting to see that. I mean, we're talking about stamina, or I was talking about stamina earlier. I saw a tweet today from Clayster that was saying something like, oh my God, it's only Thursday. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, Clay, you've got a lot of COD to play still before you can call yourself, you know. You know what United jerseys remind me of? Do you guys remember a few years ago that thing with the dress? Was it black and blue or was it like gold and blue? Oh, yeah. You oh, yeah. looked at it and you had to see what color. <laughs> Their jerseys are definitely white and black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see red and green. <laughs> I see a rainbow like my sneakers. <laughs> Jay's wearing gray sneakers today, friends, in case you're wondering. They are quite nice. It's on your IG, right, Jay? Sure. Yeah, it is. Sure, I yeah. just don't. Uh, you ready for someone to uh, spill fruit punch on him again? Not you, Kate, please. Don't I wasn't the one who did it last time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate, let's just reel this one back. Elevate have pretty handedly taken their wave through B. <laughs> then they lose three lives, and it looks like a United breaking back in. It's a perfect play from Clay, though. Very, very heads up. Gets in right behind them, sets on top of their plat, and just manages to deal as much damage as he possibly can. He's forced, the, he's forced them on the outside of the map now. However, Lace, he does win the sword battle against Abizi there, so that's an open lane for them to map. now make their way on towards the point. It's going to be hard for Elevate to just simply get up. Well, they get three kills at the stairs. Yeah. Forget it. I was going to say, they were just so pushed up far in their base that they basically had everything cut off. So E and I were just going to play for spawn kills. Stall out the time here. I thought it was going to go to at least 35 seconds. But it was a good play out of Elevate. And now, if you want to continue watching this, you can do so on Bravo, United, and Elevate going at it. But now, back to Alpha Team War versus Fuego Gaming going head to head there. Hacienda Search, we're already into the first round. Gunfire exchanges there, and again, if you just join us, that first matchup from Team War, the most absurd start to a hard point we've seen since maybe, I want to say, Birmingham, uh, World War II last year. Interesting. Nice memory. Remember Splice? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Pod knows out there, know what I'm talking about. 4v4, as one boy gets exchanged, Peter's in the mix of that one. Madcat shouldn't down Vortex, and suddenly Fuego have that advantage. But again, 
It's easy enough getting this bomb down. Sometimes it's keeping it down, and that's the question. 2v1 all up to Dave as he hops and skips over the fences. Connor with the double. And that's what Fuego needed. They had a very poor start to the hard point. This time they're going to change that around. A strong start to search and destroy here. And again, I will say, you look at Team War, you see veterans, you see experience, you see that across the board. When you look at Fuego, you, you see sprinkles of it here and there in, what, Madcap, Vortex maybe, but some of these guys, you, Connor, Chaxter, like, I, I've not seen these guys before. Like, clearly Madcap saw something in them to pick them up, to give them a chance, and they're trying to prove it here. It's funny when I think of these teams, I think the potential that could have been if, you know, they'd managed to get themselves pro league spots, it could have been something like this. You know, the amount of players in this team that were in the league last year. Yeah. How are the mighty have fallen? How are the... Well, I say mighty, it was Epsilon, but, you know, <laughs> round two underway. Nothing mighty about Epsilon. <laughs> first blood, Vortex strikes first. Connor will fall. And as time starts to tick away, Josh is going to chip away at Fuego's front line. Chaks the down, 5v3, and you see the push through B as well. This is just a stomping, Whoa. an absolute stomping. <clears throat> Perfectly executed there by Team War. Nothing wrong with running as a four-man unit there. Three guys hit rock, they just jump over each other, they make the shots happen. No one goes down, then you've got one player, this is it, coming in on the flank, PE. Just in case the trouble was there, Mad Cat was trying to be a good teammate and get involved in the fight, hopefully catch one of those players from War overextending in the, in the push, and... No need, mate. What a round that was. We've seen a few of those kind of rounds here at Champs already. Give it a go, friends. Push us a five. We've been saying it all year. Just give it a go. I tried that. League play. Five-man B. Just attacking B, and then you see your teammates sit back, chill out. And as it is 1-1, one, one. search and destroy again. Blows have been exchanged. Defag and Harry this time. The action seems to be going down a lot by B from both teams here, interestingly enough. Harry, though, job done. All he needs is one kill there, and guess what? Trades galore. Mad Cat and Chaxter coming in, and leaving it all up to the man, the myth, the B-sport. Searching for his ex-teammate Mad Cat and his teammate Connor. It's a good spot for Josh to be in, though. He does have a bit of utility to work with in this 1v2. Because the bomb's going to go down at B. He knows that's happening. That's a great spot as well. Identify one of the players on the flank. Watch out, though. He's put himself right in the middle of the sandwich, and he's the meat. Great job to isolate the 1v1, and now there it is. Go on, Josh. Can he complete it? Oh, that stim. Stops the stim going through just that one stray shot. Now Josh has to slow this down. He could possibly go for the diffuse at this point, but got to be very, very careful. Hard time. Oh, that's it. Connor. That big old ICR gets it done. Mad Cat will be relieved as well when Josh took him down. He's like, do not let this guy 1v2. Don't let it happen. Josh, though, strong performance. I think he picked up three kills that round alone. One right there, drops down to find another. And, of course, shoots Mad Cat in the side for an easy third. And again, it comes to the point now where these teams are facing off. Like, who is going to do better in bracket? Now, obviously, we don't have all the information, but you look at Team War, you look at the performance in Miami, they got to that grand final. They look a little bit more polished, if I'm being honest myself. They look like they have that that team, the knowledge, and, and maybe the power, if you like, to push on and maybe do something in the bracket. Um, Fuego, for me, need to, need to show me something in the next couple of maps here to really change my mind. Interesting play here. Now we've got four men towards B as the bomb goes down. PT playing Island all alone, though, on that far left-hand side of the map. Now that the bomb's gone down, Pete's in a really interesting opportunity now to push forward and possibly catch these players on the run across to B, and he finds one. That's going to make those defenders now have to rethink the push. They need to get on the site quickly and try to win that fight. And they've committed. Defrag's going to get the first, and oh, boy, he almost found the second, and it's now a 3v2. Fuego are bleeding at the seams. There's not a stop in war right now. Mad Cat. He's going to back up 13 seconds, surely not let the kills go down. Simply no stopping war in that play there. Great timing from PE on the first kill. And then solid trades when it comes down to it there on the point. And amazingly enough, I mean, Defrag almost managed to find that kill with the hip fire while stunned. That had been absolutely absurd, but still yep. a good round for war. Madcat taking himself out of that equation with just 0.6 seconds left on the clock. Vortex had a great show in here. The cushion went down. I think he finds two as he slides on through, but Connor, that was a team shot. And again, search and destroy, getting that team fire in, we know how important that is, especially when you've got something like Stim. 
when you've got something like that, you just need to nullify them, take them down. And that's what Team War did so well there. Back to back with the United as they play. Elevate, it seems, these guys fighting for survival, though. And again, we're going to slow this down again, friends. The importance of this matchup for both these teams. The winner advances to bracket play. The other does not. Quick bomb plant here for Fuego. All tied up 2-2. Two to two. That's a concussion that is going to connect for a second, but it's not really going to do much here. Just make that 45 or 35 in the top middle. The time ticks away, and someone's got a pounce. Cluster thrown in. PD through the middle. Tries to survive. Not going to happen, though. Team shot comes through. Fuego 5, make it 4. As War do drop 2. Great pinch, though. Vortex now trying to get in the fight, and he's going to be there at the right time. Hawkey goes down 2v2 right now, and it's going to come down. We're going to fight in the house, and it's going to be Chaxer up top. Josh, last player left alive, and he's going to come forward, and he's going we'll to get it, and it's another 1v1. Time ticking, though. That's going to be it. Good timing on the fight. Yeah, smart play from Chaxer. Like, he kind of threw himself out there and said, you know what, I'll, I'll go out, I'll check the bomb. If I lose the gunfight, then you're good. You don't need to challenge. And that's exactly what happens. Obviously, we see Team War rewarded with two kills there, but all that matters is, of course, that round. Tense moments. It's real tense here. It's very, very tense here at Champs. And again, the, the first few group play matches were all smiles. Everyone's like, oh, it's really good to be here. And then when it starts to get serious, you're like, okay, no, none of these players are making bracket play. It's a lot of money on the line. Life-changing money on the line, truly. Your whole year has led to this. And it's interesting enough, you have your strategy going into this. You're like, this is what you're doing. This is your role. This is your specialist. As he met Brack, as he was kind of coming out from Luminosity, and he was like, we're thinking of giving Skies the Maddox. Or like, changing things up, literally mid-tournament, because things are not working. Sometimes you've got to be able to adapt. The scary scenes when you're making an adaptation on the Thursday here at Champs, round six now. As we kick this one off, very, very slow defense from everyone in Fuego, not willing to give too much up. Same can be said for war. They haven't spotted anyone. Nobody down low, no one up top since that opening run. And now we're just waiting for the mistakes to be made. Bombs traversing slowly towards the A site. And you see Madcat now. He's the only player up top, but not in a position to catch any of these players. He has to put himself in the line of sight. He's got to put himself in the danger zone to really know. With that bomb going down now, there's no one on Fuego able to really hit the pinch. You've got a solid setup now from Team War. Number six, Josh is watching the middle of the map, so he's making that laneway safe. Means they can just sort of muscle up, take the fight to the front. This is big from Josh. Josh is hitting the flank. He's going to see three, maybe four players. Let him lose. Take him down. And that's going to be a double. Josh, job done here. Now a 3v2 in favor of Fuego. Vortex is going to hit the flank as well. And he comes in behind just at the right time. Puts it down the tracks for a 2v1. There's 15 seconds left. And that's going to be a Vortex. Fills the shoes of Josh almost instantly. Yep. Finds himself two kills. Very, very close, though. I mean, a very, uh, an incredibly difficult situation to be in. You know, if you're Chaxer, he's going to get... If he does manage to win the 1v1 against Vortex, he's got 14 seconds to get another kill and defuse the bomb. Very, very difficult scenes. Whew. Nice 2v3 there. Clutch is welcoming him from war. I saw the numbers. Obviously, he do favor Fuego, but huge flank from, uh, from Josh, I believe, who found two. Vortex as well. A nice double that round here as we move on to the next round. Fuego, of course, losing out in uh, the hard point. Josh already hitting double digit here. Ten kills to his name. Out on the wall will be Josh on that deep flank. And this could work out for him. He definitely spotted someone there. Connor's going to get the first blood, but it might be quickly nullified here by Josh. The Vortex tries to find those kills in the mid. My cat cleans up defrag out the back, so that's going to be a five on two right now. Still, Josh is really yet to get involved, and that's it. Dave's the last one. He could just sit here in this position and drown himself out slowly, but 30 seconds, the bomb's going out. Trying to find something as Dave just sitting tight. Does want to let the water do the work, not fuel the fire that is Fuego right now. That's it. Map point for Fuego. Yeah. And again, you could see the hesitation. He nearly took that shot, and I thought he might have took it when he was going down as well, just to take one with him. But he opts not to, and I think that's the smart play. Fuego really turned this around in a big way, actually. War really had the initiative in most of the opening rounds. They didn't really give anything up, and they managed to close out those rounds relatively comfortably. And then the back and forth began around that sort of round four, round, five, round three, round four mark. And now 
Fuego have literally lit this one on fire, and now they're making their way towards that next map. And good job, because that hard point was a stinker. Tying it up 1-1 would be ideal for them. Here we go. Oh, it's not map point. I'm out of my mind. What the numbers, Miles? We're in round number eight, guys. Sorry about that. Sorry. It's been, it's been a long week. It's been a good week. Miles is silly. No, silly is silly. I'm, I'm Miles. Ooh, okay, Madcat. Cha-ching. Takes care of Josh. The bomb goes down, though. Josh will be thinking, how on earth has that just happened? Well, it's called FMJ. A little bit of luck, a lot of skill. Dave and Petey, though, what a wombo combo that is as Dave finishes up. Well, Petey couldn't, and Petey, though, still in the mix. That's going to be a four to two. Shots are still there. Vortex has shown up. See you later, mates. What a big round. Vortex again with the double at the end, really racking in those kills. And now it currently sits five to four, and this would mean that if they win one more round, Miles, that would be... Well, the match. I, I don't know. I'm not going to throw numbers at them, Phil. I swear I saw that. I fancy another round 11. We've had plenty of them already. It's only Thursday. Sleepy, maybe. Don't cry. You're winning. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. Believe. Believe. Round nine. We're all tied up at those numbers. And again, we haven't seen too many snipes this match, actually, if any. Plenty of times we've seen exciting shots here on Hacienda. Hacienda can be a bit of a coin toss at times. Vortex, this is so aggressive. On the defense, he's, made, he's got a teammate backing him up. It's going to be defragging. They're going all the way around. Number four may have just caught his prey. Madcat, he's in from behind. He's going to pounce any second now. Big shots as Madcat does get it on the other side of the map as well. This is great work. Defrag from up high. It's going to make it a three on three. PT on point. But that player trapped in the corner. Harry doesn't Ooh. quite have the metal to get the kill. And now we have it. We could be seeing potentially a defuse here. Mad Cat can't get in from behind. This is brilliant work. Hawkey now trying to keep this alive, but that's going to be it. Defrag's already on the defuse. He's got the man all over the point. He was desperate to try to make the play there onto the player on the bomb. Solid, solid work from War. And that's it, Phil. I can safely say it. Matt Point. But maybe. Who knows? Uh, I will say that was nice four kills coming in from Dave. He's on a little bit of a streak himself now. And as we see Team War... The pressure building. Oh, it's getting Going into control 2-0 up. There's a good feeling. For sure, yeah, reverse sweeps can happen. But it was a really good prediction from Dave. He called out that straight away. He knew where they were coming. And it's almost deja vu. Rolls reversed, if you like. Josh did the exact same. But Fuego didn't anticipate it. Couldn't make it. He didn't have Dave. So yeah, that's where you went wrong. Didn't have Dave. Dr. Dave. Thinking into the future. Here we go. Round 10. Crucial now for Fuego. Do not want to be going down 2 0 in this series. Heavy push towards B, heavy push towards A, either side. It's a bit of yang, bit of yang. War are going to be able to get that bomb down very, very fast, and then it's going to be a fist fight. As Fuego are going to have to try and break their way through either the front or the back, and Josh is already making his way out towards the boathouse. He's already out on the far side. PT is 100 points away from the streaks. And here we go. It's all going down on point. Harry's going to get one. The trades are there. 2v3 right now. Fuego trying to get back into this. It all comes down to Chaxter. He's going to make it a 2v1. Can he find any more out of this one? The stim is there. The stim keeps him in the fight. 25 seconds now. And he's really going to have to make these kills work. They've got to be very fast, very decisive. If he's going to force that round 11. He's made it straight onto the point. He's made it now around the corner. Dave spotted him. Here comes the pinch. He doesn't have a whole lot to do. The kill's going to be there. And that's a 2-0 lead for Team War in this series. One map away from bracket glory. One map away indeed. Again, that is Team War versus Fuego Gaming on Alpha. And Team War continuing to move along a map away, as Miles said, from making it into the bracket. And again, we still have a few more series. We still are going to see who is being eliminated, who is making it into bracket play. And we'll get to those series in just a little bit. The Call of Duty World League is brought to you by Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, the official beverage of the CWL. Tino's Pizza Rolls. Make the everyday epic.
revamp game fuel. Level up the game. Welcome back to CWL Champs here in Los Angeles. I am your host, Katie Bedford, joined by Miles, Momo, and Study here on the desk. A little bit of an update for you. Celtic FC have been eliminated. Fortunately, they will not be able to move on, so their run at Champs ends on day two. Of course, Team War and Fuego Gaming still going at it on Alpha. Team War uh, a map away from closing that out. Single map. And Fuego United up 2-1 over Elevate right now as well. They're on Bravo. That's interesting enough. 2-1, actually. I, again, I'm still surprised we even saw um, Elevate take a map after the depths they had. But hey, that's that's the beauty of champs. You just need to sort of, you need to sort of you know, muscle it out and get through that. And you know, by the time Friday rolls around, you're the team you expect to be. Good, yeah, thing, by the time good thing that they were taking maps just in general in yeah. every single one of their series because that qualification spot for, between them and Celtic came down to, in order for Celtic to get that, they had to have at least won two maps in the series. Unfortunately, they only won one map in that series. Elevate don't even need to win this series now, but for right. the simple fact that They're they good. have map, more yeah. map wins than they do series wins. So just that just that, that's that alone, they already had the spot. Yeah, RBL, of course, 3-1-ing Celtic. Uh, potentially uh, even a 3-2 different story. But yes, as Study said it, Elevate have uh, have qualified. Unfortunately, Celtic uh, have not. And again, this is, what, this is what this group stage is for. Miles, yes. I was just looking at Gen G right now. I was just going to say as well, Miles, Miles <laughs> about seven minutes ago before the, the before, before we went into the series, like, I can't wait for Celtic to be, like, throughout the stadium. They're up there. Yeah. Wow. Gonna be alive. Such bad um, luck. They're out. <laughs> you are the destroyer of dreams. I am destroyer. many. Well, I'm just saying, all I'm saying is I checked my phone halfway through and uh, let's just say my cash app went off. <laughs> Same. No, it Same. didn't. No, it didn't. <laughs> All right, let's get in a hit here. We talked about it briefly. United and Elevate on Bravo. United looking to close this out and end it 3-1. About four, 10 points, rather. 10 points off winning this hard point. Elevate, oh, you got a long way to go. Elevate must have got the inside of there really qualified on the spot. I'm like, hey, boys. <laughs> We're chilling. It's match today. Let's, <laughs> let's just sort of, like, I guess, make this competitive on this map. And then uh, we're probably going to lose. It's a United, the best team in the game so far. They just won the event. But you can't be mad. You're going into tomorrow, and you're still going to be playing. So if you're Elevate, congratulations on that spot. Yeah, maybe see what you can learn from this. Of course, take it as some practice, but you have qualified. So The crazy thing is, they actually may not have a clue as well. They may, no. not, ha they may yeah. not have a clue at all. Um, well, so do we it, have news it, for you? It will be a nice or a pleasant surprise. Like, yes, yeah, you just lost 3-1, but congratulations. It's, it's bittersweet, but I will say, um, I want to look at EU9 for a second. These guys are looking dominant. Prestini, 22 and 20, but more importantly, 100 Ooh. seconds of a... Whoa! Hey, hey, oh, hey, 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 oh, hey, oh, Prestini! Hey. Oh, I was just about to sing your praises. Now you're just being evil. <laughs> He's looking good, though. I'm actually curious, like, say for instance, Elevate do not know that they didn't make the spot. If we can get, like, a player reaction to see how they react to it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Just oh, cameraman. Wait Turn for it. To elevate. Game. Turn to Elevate. Move. We don't. Yeah, there, there we, go. we go. Oh, it all looks so sad, but wait a second. But wait, you qualified. But wait. Someone tell them. You made it. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I think the United jerseys are there. It's like, we won an event jerseys. How I like them. Oh, they're okay. How, how long do you think they've had those in boxes waiting to get them out? <laughs> uh, how many days has it been since? Uh... 1,400 and... Hey, back to the series, friends. Fuego and Team War. There you have it, of course. Again, on Alpha, Team War up two maps. One more to go to close that out. Fuego desperately looking to get something going, and the only time they're going to be able to do it is in that seaside control. They so need to catch some Fuego, baby. Need to catch Fuego. It's going to be very, very hard again on seaside control to, to, to add, literally extinguish Team War right now. I mean, they're fantastic. There's nothing going wrong for them. Everyone's shooting well. We saw the dominance they had in the first respawn game mode. Nothing to say that they can't do the same thing here on seaside. Yeah. I, I do think when I take a step back, and I look at these two teams, I kind of said it, start search and destroy. I see Team War going through. I see them maybe making some damage in the bracket. I see that experience, that skill, that talent, everything on that squad. And I see it lacking a little bit for Fuego. Fuego have performed so, so well. They've actually exceeded my expectations coming into this tournament. I mean, you take down Gen G. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> it's crazy to think what they have done, but also to do that and then miss out, it is tough. However, they've got to do something special now. Fuego, three maps. It starts here. It starts now. Josh, Dave making the way over them through mid. They're going to cut straight on through to A, trying to make the damage there as early as possible. And it is working out. 
first moments of ticks are being closed up. Hawkey and Madcap find their respective kills, but the capture is still underway. They have to make it on a point to get the contest through. It's there. It is going to slowly start to drain out, so the early pressure felt on A will now be extinguished. Contested. Slid on in. Josh. PD. PD again there. Three go down, and Fuego may just have to sit back, give up B here, or are they going to go for the blood? Back and away they go. I'm enjoying this. They're hyper-aggressive as they make their way forward. Defrag is sort of holding the back line, getting the first tick at B. And with that tick, though, he's still trying to keep that presence on A. The game plan still seems to be go for A. Don't let anything up. Do the best you can to get the kills while you're at it. And I must admit, Team War at 20 to 18, they have a nice early lead. Top lead there from Vortex as well. Just oh. keeping the pressure there. And this is what I worried about. Team War, the individual skill right now is on point. The teamwork is fantastic. The respawn dominance is there. Fuego, they really don't have a whole lot to work with right now. We go here, struggling. You can see, usually when you're on the attacking side, this is pretty normal to be at a life deficit. And when you're on the defensive side here at Church, you can kind of make this up because they're obviously forced into doing something they don't want to. And that's push these corners, push these lanes. However, Defrag, Vortex, all going down. That's a five man down, but there's only two players alive for Team War. And they're going to stick it. They're going to try and get this first tick on the board, but it's going to go slower with Vortex and PD skedaddling out of that one. Not happening. Slow and steady now. Josh and PT try to just hold down the back of Church P with a nice two there. He manages just to catch the Kalat in a way, and now the reinforcements arrive. They're going to be able to hit the front of the Church, do the best they can, and now get into the tick. Get into that first section of the A. Great shots, and again, still trying to maintain that presence. Pete can stay alive again. He has been absolutely instrumental so far in keeping his team oh! in this one, and the shots were there. No more damage to be found, but it's 11 to 2. You don't need to cap the point anymore. Harry's the last player left alive, and PT at 10 and 3. This series, he has been absolutely blinding for war. He really has. He's been on top of his game. I think we both managed to have a quick chat with him yesterday, actually, just when he uh, when he uh, won his previous game, and you know he was feeling himself. He was going well. Uh, that was on the snatch frequency. He seems to again be a player that is really comfortable in the role that he's given here on this team, uh, and Pete again has that experience, maybe to to help out players like Defrag and, you know, the, the newer, less experienced ones who haven't played at a Champs before. You know, P has been at these Champs before. P's placed, I think, top 12 before. I believe it was under Aware. Um, and, and again, he wants better. He wants more. I'm trying to remember where P got at uh, Black Ops 3. Was he on? He wasn't on Fabi then, was he? Uh, no, P was, I believe that was Aware Gaming. It was Aware Gaming? I got dropped. Did you? Yeah. Sorry, mate. We casted that event together, didn't we? Right. We did, yeah. They didn't win that much, to be fair. It's That's all right. good. No worries, mate. Now nah, it's nice to see him doing well and again just sticking at it. Uh, but talk about Black Ops 3, then you talk about Josh. My goodness. That's a different kind of cash. But anyway, moving forward here to Streaks for Petey. What? Speaking of Josh, what was that? Great work from Team War. And it's starting to look a little bit darker and darker from the way go. Uh -oh. There's not a whole lot they can do. I mean, this is super donk. Mate, he almost did that. He almost landed that. No point stim shotting when you're falling down the mountain. However, I'll give it to you. 25 to 24. Big cluster goes out. Could connect with one. Flak jackets galore here as we go down to the cafe. As it connects with a couple. And now we're starting to see these streaks. And he's looking to curl that one in. There it comes. Oh, my goodness. PT. Bends it like Beckham all the way around there, straight into the little alcove, straight on towards the B site. Dave now trying to get involved. Love seeing the RK7, the rise of the RK7 here at Champs. I mean, everyone's got one in their back pocket. It's just such a versatile weapon. Dave still making his way forward. Connor now trying to get in the rear, bring down Dave. Take down that ICR, so now you've got a bit of space to work with for your teams. Get your Sorgs into the mix. Connor still alive in the back line. Brilliant work again to stay there. There's his third from behind. Connor, he ain't stopping yet. PE close to that tech five. Life count even. I said in the previous round, it's usually quite uh, lopsided sometimes towards the attacking team at this point. It's not the case. Team Warrior doing really, really well just to kind of hold off this attack here. And they're actually going for it once more. Madcat rewarded with the double for that. He's going to stay alive as Connor finds Dave. And this is the part where we saw previously it was 20 to 15 to war. However, this time around, in round number two, you're going to have these specialists. You're going to have these streaks. And... We'll see how they utilize. PD currently sat 12 and 6, double positive for his squad. Look at number 2, by the way, Defrag. He's flanked the flank. Get out of here, Chaxter. 
My wine barrels as he takes control. Three kills go down, and now this gives uh, Team War a chance to push on out. Oh, this could be huge. Unfortunately for Connor, not able to close out there on the full streaks. Beef still has his lightning strike to work with as Traxter now makes his way into the point. Ooh. A is all that remains. Attack 5 comes through, just reinforcing those players on the defense. They don't have to relinquish that mid-map control they have now, but Defrag, once again, he's also hitting the back lines. As Josh now trying to get into the mix. Defrag has done everything he possibly can to be a nuisance in that back line. Defrag's still alive. He flanked the flank, went back through wine barrels, came back through wine barrels. Now he's coming up into checkers. Is going to be finally shut down. That's got to be a minute, minute and a half he's been alive there. But 12 to 7. Fuego may only have one more push in them one quality push with all five players alive here you can see dave still has that tack five pd with of course the 175 and of course lightning strike he's wanting to save that for the next round you know close this out in a hot 3-0 both in series and map but as the time ticks 25 seconds you gotta go josh finds two josh shuts down but it's 11 v5 v4 v3 as fuego may go home after this one 15 seconds only one round is going to separate them. Connor and Madcat simply can't get there. The time is too little. And just like that, Team War 2-0 up in the series. 2-0 up in control. They're one round away from doing it. Miles. Cannot believe it. A very, very dominant opening to the round, and then it kind of petered out towards the end. It slowed down somewhat. We saw some brilliance out of Fuego, but just not enough to close out, and you need to close out. I will say that the bane right now of Fuego's gameplay seems to be the flanks. They just do not watch their flanks solid enough every single time, whether it's Defrag on the flank, whether it's Josh hitting your flanks from behind. This is where the weakness really lies. And without watching those back lines, they're so focused forward. They're all about the push. They're all about the yeah. drive forward. And without that, I mean, they don't really have the progress on the map, but the real weakness is just the flanks, boys. Somebody needs to just turn around and make we, sure that you're safe. Yeah, we didn't see one decent push or like solid push through wine barrels there on the attack. It just seemed like they were throwing two and three here, there through mid. And uh, again, that was with Team War. When they got those kills on the defense, they pushed on out. They stopped any type of, type of attack. And talking of attack, Josh straight down the middle. Once again, straight through the mid. Gets the first kill on the cleanup and that's it. The boys are in, they're in on A. We saw how devastating they were in the opening rounds of the first offensive round. Or the opening moments of the first offensive round. Excuse me, moi. They managed to get the kills, they managed to get a tick, and now they're doing exactly the same thing. PT Vortex, Josh, the kills are there. Josh almost able to get Chaxter as well. First tick done, second tick almost closed out. And this is a devastating look now for Fuego. They have to get in on the point. They have to get these players out of church. They've got nothing to work with outside of, you know, violence and, and harsh language. There's nothing. Phil, we could be looking at Team War now advancing. They managed to stop the play there at A, but this is just so unstoppable right now. Yeah, two ticks. That's a really good progress made by Team War. And what that does is means it's like, okay, let's go back to B, let's secure it. And now A is simply one wave, one set of kills, and it's over 22 to 22. Again, PT still has this lightning strike. Look at Vortex, Dave, Defrag, and Josh, though. All those specialists are about to come in. It's going to be insane to see Team War just unleash this. But Josh, I tell you what, he's got his eyes on the prize, the prize being A, and he's still going full force for it. This is the game plan. They didn't change anything in the first defensive round. They're not changing anything now. Hit A, make sure that A is ours, or at least feel the pressure there, because it's easy enough for them to get to B. It's halfway across the map, whereas that A journey is a long one. It's a long run. Ooh, Oy. Josh. Still going. 16 to 14 now. Josh will be loving every single second of this, shutting down his ex-teammates. <laughs> he will be shouting and screaming downstairs. There's three life lead. They've got plenty of specialists to play with. They need two ticks on B. Vision pulses in, War Machine at the ready. Only finds one though. Six goes down, Josh now in the back line, slams up. Unfortunately, he hits the top of the door frame and it won't find any more. There's a potential for two there, 13 to 10. 120 on the clock, it's a, it's a long time to work with. There's Defrag now on the old A site as the overextends, hoping to hit the flank once more. The Achilles heel, the Bane of Fuego, and here he comes, Defrag in from behind. The stun is going to find nothing at the moment, but again, Traxter has been forced into the fight he did not want to have, and now the numbers of Fuego are dwindling. The spawners are coming in from behind, but they're staggered. They don't have the muscle. They don't have the numbers to make it work here on the point. The contest is desperation at this point, as Harry... It's everything he's possibly got right now to get these players out and Chaxter. This could be a hero player to make his way forward. Yeah, he's got to invest this slam. You, you can't even risk it at this point. It's 6v7, trophies down. You might have to take that one with you, but it's a full-on 
5v5 almost, it seems. It's like an S&D round at this time. Chaxter uses that, but actually stays alive. Important places. Connor find one on the flat. Chaxter's got to go big. Will go big. Connor finds two. And now Fuego have that advantage. Everything's been invested for Team War. Josh levels it out to a 3v3, but pushing forward now. They regain, they reset, and they may go again. 40 seconds is a long time, but which way do they push? Do they split their funds, or do they simply funnel through? There is no pressure here from Fuego. They can sit back and wait. The anticipation is there. What an ace. Buster is out. An exchange of clusters. Hawkey's down. The last two members of Fuego here. This is the final 22 seconds they've got of champs. If they don't do something special, Connor, the shots are there. It's a 1v2. Vortex comes through. And war. They get it done. It's bittersweet to knock out your fellow countrymen, especially for the Brits. That's that crazy. Easy. That's the end of the run for Fuego. Fuego unlocked the Vision Pulse with that one kill and he couldn't pop it. How good would that Vision Pulse been in that 3v3? It doesn't happen. We say goodbye to Fuego, but Team War, familiar names, Dave, Josh. We'll continue on. Woo! All of those guys again, PD, Defrag, these guys have a lot of work to still do. And you can see it. Team War qualified for bracket play, unfortunately for Fuego. Not able to bring enough to stay alive. They are eliminated following Celtic FC's elimination a little bit earlier in the day. Gotta, gotta feel good for Team War. I mean, yeah, yeah you know, bittersweet, feel, but you gotta feel great. Gotta, gotta feel, feel great. good for Team War. They went through this entire year. They went to two out of three open events and they got second, unfortunately. But then you come to Champs, which is the biggest one, and you win your mess and you close it out. Now you're gonna go in a bracket feeling a lot more confident. Congratulations to them. Now let's pull up Group A because that is done. We can see how everything settled there. E United at the top. 3-0, followed by Elevate, and of course, RBL and Celtic in third and fourth eliminated. It's funny, we go back to, I think, just before Champs, and we talked on trading shots about which team's going to make that upset, and I was very firm on Celtic maybe stealing second in this group. Um, no one really, I think it was Ben maybe picked Team War to kind of set up in, in Group B, but I didn't expect Celtic to finish fourth, let alone third. I thought these guys could definitely steal second, but it was actually Team War in Group B. Benson, the mastermind that he is, he said Gen G could get upset. He thinks Team War can make it up. Credit to Ben. Screw Benson. You see it right there, of course, Group B. Gen G settled in the very, very bottom after, of course, a wildly tragic ride for them yesterday, ending in their elimination. But again, Groups A and B are done. They are concluded. You have your teams who will continue on, and your teams like Celtic FC and Fuego, who have been eliminated here on day two of CWL Champs. But don't go anywhere. We have more Call of Duty to be played.